Hello everyone, welcome to another Transport Evolved Thought of the Day. I thought I'd do a slightly different setting today for my Thought of the Day. thought I'd come over on the couch, partly because I didn't get much sleep last night due to the previous mention of the ongoing family crisis, which got to crazy proportions last night. Say no more, but I am going to give you a Thought of the Day, and I'll try and be as cogent as I possibly can on aforementioned four hours of sleep. Uh, just a heads up this week, the content's going to be quite small. That's a dog. I don't want to play with you, mate. I mean, you're lovely and everything, but I'm trying to film. Lie down. All the way. Lie down. Come on. There we go. Sorry about that. Never work with kids and dogs. I have both. There we are. Where was I? Thank you for all the comments from yesterday talking about the Chevrolet uh, Bolt EV and why it's not coming to the UK, why right-hand drive Chevrolet Bolts should be made, why they shouldn't be made. Lots of really interesting discussion going on in the comments section. Keep it up. I like lively comment sections. Uh, unfortunately, I've not been able to read and respond to all the comments, but I hope to in the future. What do I want to talk to you about today? Well, I want to talk to you today about the advertising of range of electric cars and talking about the different range estimation techniques used by various automakers. Um, our friends over at Electrek called Volkswagen out earlier today for um, promoting their new, as yet unnamed, as yet unreleased uh, electric vehicle as having a range greater than the Model 3 and the Model X. And um, they said it was a bit unfair because Volkswagen used an NEDC rating for its own vehicle and then compared that to the EPA range rating figure. Now, for those who don't know, uh, EPA's range tests result in lower numbers of miles per charge than the NEDC tests because the NEDC tests, which are the ones we use in Europe, are overly optimistic. That means that they overestimate the number of miles that you will get in a real life situation. The EPA tests, meanwhile, are far more accurate. Now, when the car gets about 100 miles per charge, the difference between the EPA and the NEDC can be 10, 20, maybe 30 miles. When you're talking about a car that can do 200, 300 miles per charge, those differences are pretty large. That, that difference is multiplied several times, and you end up with 100 miles or more difference between the NEDC ratings and the EPA ratings. And what Volkswagen did on this recent launch is it quoted any DC ranges for its own vehicle and an EPA range for the Tesla Model 3, which is a bit disingenuous, which leads me to the question of what should automakers be rating their vehicles in? Now, in the past, uh, Renault has, I think, probably been one of the most transparent when it comes to electric vehicle range because Renault always uses the NEDC ratings because it's a European company. But then it goes on to add its real world range as an estimate. Certainly, that's what it did for the Twizy. Certainly, it's what it did for the Zoe. And it's a case of, well, on a good day, you might be able to get this range. On a bad day, you're going to get this range. Is that how we should be selling electric vehicles and electric vehicle ranges? Personally, I think so. I'll even give you my Nissan Leaf as an example. Now, I've got a 2013 Nissan Leaf right now. On a good day, I can get 80 miles or more of range. He's really wanting to play with me. I can get 80, more, 80 miles or more of range, but I can't do that on a bad day. I can only maybe get 60 miles of range. And yet the EPA rating is 83 miles, 84 miles per charge. So, you know, I know that because I'm an EV driver and I've been an EV driver for years, but your average Joe doesn't. And when they fill their car up with gasoline, they don't have to worry about the indiscrepancies in rating quite as much as when you are an electric car driver. So I want you to answer this question. Which rating should we be using for electric cars and how should automakers be advertising range? Because no automaker, even Tesla, is getting those range estimates perfect. And they're using governmental range tests as I think is appropriate. There are just so many and they're so different. It's a really confusing place for people. 
And advertisers can take advantage of that and unscrupulous automakers can take advantage of that. Don't forget to leave your comments in the thoughts below. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, depending whether you like or hate it. And don't forget to support us over at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved. As I said, I'm sorry if today's post is a little incoherent. I am operating on very limited sleep. Hopefully I will rectify that tonight and I'll hope to see you tomorrow. And don't forget to keep evolving.